It's more than just your output, more than a bike. When you hear your shout out, you know it's all right. Put on your magic pants and let's go. We're cruising into the power zone. Clip in, set yourself free. Come on and take a ride with me. You know what you need to know and what's it all about. Everything you need, it's on the clip out. Welcome to the Clip Out Podcast. This is episode 292. And this is Crystal O'Keefe. And this is Tom O'Keefe. Hello. Hi. Welcome back. Welcome back indeed. Because we were in Norwalk. We were. We had a great time in Norwalk. We did. I love Norwalk. Norwalk a, is a great town. It was a really neat town. Yeah. I, I love the surrounding areas. Yeah. Lots of, lots of good... Uh, peloton community there we had a whole bunch of people stop by yeah we did like just a real last minute thing it was like what a week out two weeks yeah. out maybe we were like hey we're gonna be in norwalk if anybody wants to hang and uh and we had like 15 20 people show up yeah, yeah. it was so much fun so nice to see people um and i think everybody is in this picture i think so um and uh i just have to send a special thanks to shirley augustin for uh securing the location for us we really appreciate yeah that. and it was nice and it was an irish pub called o'neill's which um if you're ever in norwalk you need to go to I mean, it felt a little bit like racial profiling <laughs> because your name's o'keefe right so, well so is yours <laughs> in case you were curious but uh but we but you know what it worked we 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 loved it so. yeah totally we loved it so much we went back the <laughs> we next did, night for dinner. because you were like i didn't was, get to see anything yeah because we because when i went to the we, so the room we're in like you walked in the building and like immediately to your right they had this special room that they had ended up putting us in because our group was so large and and so like you never got past that room. I never did. And so I I only got past it because I had to pee. So I saw the rest of the restroom like nine or ten times. And <laughs> and uh, but it was really neat. And so I was like, oh, it's a shame you didn't get to see it. It was really cute. So the next night we were like, well, rather than searching the Googles for a different place, let's just go back and you can you can enjoy the place and you can eat food that requires two hands yeah like i i didn't want to like yeah i didn't want to be all in my food when i was trying to talk to people yeah so i was a little daintier didn't stop me i had chicken wings i know you were all up in it i didn't care no one talked to me anyway yeah right you were talking the whole time <laughs> i was uh sat next to a lady and i'm sorry i'm blanking on her name but she is married to a nerd and so uh he you owns had a, lots of nerd we discussion. did he owns a comic book convention <laughs> like a big one at the mohegan sun like that's a huge place and so i was fast i've never so i had all sorts of questions about the business model of comic book conventions so don't worry i'm not trying to start one but uh but i was just Maybe like, we should do a podcast about it oh yeah so <laughs> but but it was it was riveting so i talked about that quite a bit yes and uh, and there was another uh, non Peloton husband there, and that was hilarious, Kevin, I yes. believe. And uh, he <laughs> he had so many questions. <laughs> it was really <laughs> really funny. <laughs> First question: What is a Peloton? <laughs> well, he knew that much. <laughs> yeah, it was so nice to see everybody. It really it always fills up my my social bucket to see all these yeah. wonderful people and and hear all the stories and. Oh, and you also uh, stopped by the store in Westchester. Yeah. No, Westport. Westport. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. And Westport, just so everybody knows, the store is closing on January 22nd. And um, I was super sad to hear that. So we stopped in and Jamie was manning the store. And uh, the second I walked in was like 75% off. And Tom was like, oh, dear. <laughs> 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 so if you live in the Westport area, there's no need to stop by because Crystal bought it all. I didn't buy it all. I didn't buy any men's clothing. I, well, I bought one men's pair of shorts. That's because Brian wanted it. Um, yeah. And uh, everything else was for me. And uh, yeah, all the women's stuff pretty much gone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a great deal. You can't say no to that. No, that is that is a good deal. I will acknowledge that. Uh, and we were super sad to hear that store was closing. Uh, it's been around a very, very long time. And uh, uh, I hate that all these store closings are, are affecting so many people. Our, our heart really does go out to all of the people that 
are no longer going to be with Peloton. And if there's ever anything we can do to help you in whatever way, you just yeah. let us know and we will do our best. Or if you're uh, selling guides out the back door when <laughs> at a cheap rate, let us know and we'll share it with people. Yeah, <laughs> could do that too. <laughs> you scoff laws. Uh, should, we, should we talk about? Should we talk about the results of our visit? Brian went to go visit a college. Oh, sure, he went to visit the college in Norwalk, and he totally he he dug it. Like I like I think we're not all the way done, but I think we certainly have a front runner. Yeah, definitely. And uh, it was it was an incredibly exhausting week. Yes. Um, but it went well. I mean, for all the travel that we did, it was very smooth travel. Very yeah, smooth. Because we I don't know if we talked about this part. We couldn't get there directly because of our scheduling issues. So Brian was doing something in Kansas City. We live in St. Louis. So our trip was we drove from we rented a car, drove from St. Louis to Kansas City, picked up Brian, flew out of Kansas City where we dropped off off the car and then flew in Boston and then flew into Boston because the air we couldn't get into Norwalk until later in the day right until like three o'clock in the afternoon on that Friday so we flew into Boston and landed at like 10 30 rented another car and then drove three hours to Norwalk so he could be there for the whole day on Friday so on we got Friday. there we got into Norwalk at 2 30 in the morning yes and, and then, then got up the next day yeah it was worked yeah, it was a lot. And yeah. then we flew out of White Plains. Yeah, which which for everybody that told us how tiny White Plains is, like you were not joking. You did not undersell it. You did not. Like it really is just a room. Yeah. It's just a room. Like that was the craziest thing I've ever seen in my I life. I think it was like the, I think it was like the basis for the show Wings. Yes. Like it was that like. That's exactly what it reminded me yeah. of. Yes. It was like there was, there was, there was like nothing there. No. But yeah. And, and people, luckily we had been told ahead of time, like go eat beforehand. And uh, we didn't get to go to the restaurant that was recommended recommended to us because it was closed on Mondays, but we did uh, stop at the Armonk, I believe, Armonk. Armonk Country Kitchen. Yes. And damn, that was good. It was. Oh, so delicious. Yeah. If you're ever in the area, I need to stop by. Plus, the house watching is amazing. Yes. Just drive on the, the roads out there between yeah. Westport and, and wherever the hell we were. It was amazing. Yeah. It, like that whole, the town and the houses, it looked like a, a mid 90s Diane Keaton romantic comedy. It did. The whole place. It did. It was just, it was just adorable. I love that area. Like if we could just pick up and move. And also had tens of millions of dollars. To spend on a house. Don't forget that part. Yeah, there's that. There's that. That's a little. I did some Googling of the houses we passed. Yeah. Holy cannoli. Boy, houses are a lot cheaper here in St. Louis. Yes. Let's just say that. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I always say, I, I like look to move to another part of the country and it's like, oh, that's really expensive. And then I like maybe we move to a third world country and then I see like the stuff there and I'm like, I think maybe we already live in a third world country. <laughs> So. <laughs> uh, and I am very proud of myself uh, because I still got my my prescribed runs in eight for miles. the week. Yeah. yeah, I did eight miles on Saturday and I did five miles on Sunday. So uh, I was very proud of myself. Yeah. And uh, then yesterday, nothing because yeah. I was exhausted because well, I, I got home late again. I did nothing the whole trip, but then worked out yesterday. So yeah. There's that. So what, pray tell, do you have in store, in store for you this week? I know it's a pretty light week, it which is, is a why light we're week. babbling here. Yeah, that's why we're telling you all about our lives. Yeah. Um, okay, so no Dr. Jen this week, no Met Pro this week. Uh, don't worry, Angelo and Dr. Jen will be back. Yes. Uh, but we had crazy schedules. They had crazy schedules. It just did not happen. So next week, they will be back. Um, until then, uh, we were also going to be talking about major, major, major ch changes that are occurring to the in-studio reservation process. That is going to be a huge discussion. Yes. Uh, there is a new, uh, there's been some new hires. We're going to chat about that. Um, talks talks about some updates to some beta tests that are happening. Uh, there's some articles we're going to cover. Uh, a few things that are going on with instructors. They've been kind of quiet this week too. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I want to talk about I want to talk about what's going on at CES because I was super, super fascinated by it. Okay. Also, our interview this week. Oh, we cannot forget our very special interview. We are so excited. Do you want me to say who it is? Yes, I do. Okay. It's uh, Dr. Pooja Lakshmin. Now, that name might sound familiar. It might not. I don't know. Well, it sounds familiar because we talked to her. Like, I, of course, it no, sounds familiar. No, I mean familiar. to the listeners. Oh, to I the listeners. I know it sounds familiar okay. to you. Okay. That makes more sense. But if you're wondering why that name sounds familiar, that is because she is on Peloton's advisory council and, and helped come up with the motivational languages that we ended the year with at Peloton. And there's going to be more coming 
about these motivational languages in the month of January. So we're we're keeping going with that. Yeah, keeping so she's going with that theme. Going to walk us through all that and explain the logic behind it and how you can utilize it to improve your workouts. Yeah, super exciting stuff, uh, and we so appreciate her time because it is, she's a busy, busy lady. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, I guess before we get to all that shameless plugs, don't forget we're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeart, TuneIn, wherever you find a podcast, you can find us. While you're there, be sure and follow us so you never miss an episode episode maybe uh maybe leave us a review that's always helpful we yes, appreciate please. that you can also uh find us on the facebook facebook.com slash the clip out while you're there like the page join the group and you can check out our patreon patreon.com slash the clip out where you can get all sorts of uh bonus content and you can also when the episodes get to us earlier they get to you early and they arrive to you ad free uh finally no not finally two more two finallys finally a finally b correct so finally a uh, you can also watch these episodes on youtube so while you're over there uh, be sure and click the follow button as well it says do not click this and click it (laughs) because you can't it's like wet paint you're gonna test it (laughs) you're gonna you're gonna check it out so you can watch all of these episodes so you can stare into my warm loving eyes and, and you can also sign up for our newsletter at theclipout.com. We'll, we'll send you the links and the things like that. So there's all that. Let's uh, let's dig in, shall we? We shall. And we will dig in right after this. Peloton in the news. We have all sorts of changes to the in-studio reservation process, and these seem like good things right they're great things. these are great things great. we're very happy about these it will hopefully make things a little bit more equitable for all parties involved oh this is going to be amazing okay so get this guys the first thing you need to know they're adding not one but two days to the studio they're going to be adding on thursdays for live classes and they are going to be adding on Mondays for live classes. So from now on, Thursdays through Mondays, live classes. Now, the best part about this is you now have limits. Limits. Limits, you guys. <laughs> for all of you that have been asking, this is going to be the key to getting more people in the studio. There are going to be a limit. You can only take two classes per day, period. You can only take four classes per day week there's no limit on modality so if you want to take two bike classes great if you want to take a bike class and a tread class great get this this is also very exciting news they are going to be adding tread excuse me boot camps in general and pilates classes yay oh, wow. so those are going to be able to be taken live too so it's super exciting um let's see what else what so else that's going to help lighten the 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 onslaught because not only you have more days but you have more more potential classes to sign up for too right exactly and they are changing the day that you go in and sign up so this whole time since they've been back it's been mondays noon eastern no more now thursdays noon eastern that's when we're going to see it come up from now on. Any insight as to why the shift? Yes. Uh, apparently, uh, lots of people are very busy at their jobs on Mondays. And I guess through different testing, they mm-hmm. have found that Thursday is a better day. So Thursday is going to be a day for that. Uh, and by the way, all of these changes, all of these changes are for PSNY and PSL. So London and New York both get all these changes. Awesome. So any insight as to if or how this affects the waitlist process? No, we okay. do not have any information on the waitlist. The, the way that it was described to me is the process will be exactly the same, mm-hmm. except for there will be limits on booking. And I did ask the question, what is it going to look like if you hit your limit? Like what comes up on the screen? I don't have a question for or an answer for that yet. But as soon as I do, I will let you guys know. I like to think that it's um, Robin Arzan just wagging her finger at you. Uh -uh. Oh, my God. That would be amazing. They should do that. 
I love that so much. Uh, so if you're if you're hearing this on Friday, you probably saw all this come out on Thursday. So this this all takes place Thursday, January twelfth. It starts. So, so it starts immediately. It starts immediately. Look at that. And um and then let's see. We don't have any. Oh, if you book and then you can't attend, like let's say you book four classes and then oh you could only take two for whatever reason. They will seize your bike. <laughs> no. No. Uh, okay. In fact, those two classes that you ended up not being able to take, I don't know what the process is to share with them you were unable to take it. But once you have done that, you will then be able to take two more classes that way. But week. you will have to take your class in the corner on an echelon. <laughs> That is that is possible. Okay. That is possible. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, we got to sit down and ask some questions with some Peloton spokespeople, and they were very clear to say the that the the. the, the the problem they were trying to solve is more people wanted to take classes. Right. Like the deal is the the if you look at this is supply and demand, the uh, supply was far outweighed by yeah. the demand. And, and it's always going to at this point, mm-hmm. I think. I like I'm sure this helps. Like I'm not disparaging help. that but I, I think it's it's always going to be a land rush when they when they open up the scheduling on Thursdays now. It, yeah, and I also think that part of the idea here is that there's, you know, I got the impression through the response, like the cha- reason these changes were being made is mm-hmm. that they are they are doing this to balance being able to do those direct to camera classes still that are being filmed, and trying to meet that demand, that increased demand. So um, we've talked about this before. Our thought is it's never going to go back to seven days a week all day long. And that's because they're trying to still do those direct camera. Yeah, structurally, they they do need the studio empty so they can record some other things. And I'm sure that there's probably, I wouldn't be surprised if there's sometimes they bring in famous people. Maybe they don't want a bunch of people around. Well, and and actually, it's interesting because those special events that have been occurring, like Cody LOL and mm-hmm. things like that, those have been occurring on Thursdays. So... Now that they're opening up on Thursdays, maybe there won't be as many invite only opportunities. But I asked about the invite only opportunities. And one of the things that they said to me was people who had previously tried to get into the studio and were not able to get into the studio for whatever reason, mm-hmm. um, they they try to be proactive and make sure that those are the people that are getting to come in. So um my understanding is, you know, this is coming from, hey, Peloton is still a member centric company right they want to do the things to make sure that as many people are getting in the studio as possible and that's got to be a difficult line to walk because on the one hand you know you have lots of people that come in from out of town and they don't they they don't have as many opportunities because it's difficult for them to get there but on the flip side it's not fair to say oh but anybody who lives within a 50 mile radius can go f themselves right and they don't ever get to go into classes either yeah and so but so you're trying to walk that line between you don't want the people that because of proximity are maybe gobbling up a lot of inventory and making it virtually impossible for the out-of-towners to ever attend either so it's yeah that's there's a lot of a lot of a lot of variables there there is. And for those of you wondering, like, how they're going to count those classes, they count it by your email address. Like, whatever email you have booked with the studio, that's the one they're using to put your uh, limits on. Uh, and my understanding is you still can't transfer classes. So if you take a class, you go in, you you book a class for your spouse, you're not going to be able to just transfer it for to them. So keep that in mind. You might get lucky. They might let you do that. Right. But do not assume that they will. Like, do not assume that. Uh, at any rate, I think this is all really good news for people. I think I think that we will see a little bit of an improvement with the amount of people getting in. And I, I hope that that people see it that way. And I'm sure there's still going to be problems. Like, let me be clear. Yeah. This is not going to solve every single problem. But we're going to see this whole, like, um, episode. There's going to be all these episodes released by the instructors. They're going to do, like, a 101 series. Mm-hmm. They're going to be talking through little tips that you know. Because they're very much aware. We all want to get into the studio. Right. And so they're letting the instructors kind of tell us some of these things. So we're going to hear about the tips. Here's what you need to know. Here's how you can do it. And you're going to be hearing it straight from the instructors, which I think is very smart on their part. Absolutely. Peloton has a new vice president of product. Yeah. So um, I can't remember 
where this gentleman was from before. Uh, but he is going to be leading growth e-commerce apps partnerships. And uh, he, over on LinkedIn, he's saying, feel free to send your product feedback and request his way. Oh, oh dear. Oh, Brent, careful yeah. what you ask for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you oh, poor, Brent. poor soul. <laughs> I remember my first day. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to change the world <laughs> but the world changed me <laughs> well welcome to peloton and enjoy your full inbox <laughs> yeah. so what does that mean exactly vice president of product well um so he's leading the growth of products so it means like if you like let's just look at the guide for example okay um so if you were like oh i really wanted to add like count my reps which everybody did and they've added that i know okay. that i'm just saying that's an right, example right. that would be an example of something that you know he's going to be leading the growth of like he's trying to grow the product so not clear if this means existing only or if we're talking about potential products down the road right right now to to our knowledge there are no products that are are in the pipeline i think that right now we are looking at um updates to all existing things that like the app and things like that because that's what they're focused on they want to get their money back on track and that's right. the best way to do that so i know pe there are people out there that keep saying like there's going to be a tonal like device like everything i'm hearing guys not yeah. happening so please don't count on that um but if it's an existing product he's saying hey send me your ideas send me your feedback because i want to hear about that so hop on over to linkedin and be like dear brent please buy tonal <laughs> yeah really <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing it really would Peloton has ended beta testing of something or other. <laughs> uh, the microphone testing. So test, test, <laughs> test. I think they were trying. This is like part of the voice activation work that they were doing, voice searching. Uh, and they they said throughout this testing uh, that they've had almost 12,000 completed workouts and an average of 743 people working out each day and an average of seven workouts per tester. Uh, so that's pretty pretty exciting. And since this is ending, uh, hopefully in the next, I don't know, three to four months, maybe yeah. we'll see, see whatever changes this results in. Yeah. Get to it, Brent. <laughs> Come on. Brent's like, it's day one. Calm down. You know, we recorded this on day one. By the time you're hearing this, it's day three. So get your shit together brent everybody else that started this year had to go 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 yeah come on we're so <laughs> tired of excuses it's all we've been hearing you from you brent stop by barry's office and see what he had to deal with on day one <laughs> <laughs> it's all in love all in love consumer reports your grandfather's favorite magazine uh, I love Consumer Reports. I did too. They used to have a blog that was great called Consumerist, and then they got rid of it. It's weird. It was not Consumer Reports, and then they bought it, and then they shut it down. I seems not a good business model for people that judge business models, but fair enough. Uh, anyway, Consumer <laughs> Reports. <laughs> About that. I just like the Consumerist, and I wish it was still around. Consumer Reports, <laughs> 45th times a charm, uh, has reviewed both bikes and treads and peloton came at the in at the top of both lists yes and i, and I want to be clear now the tread was under non-folding treadmills because of course it doesn't fold and that's a separate category right. but yeah i got number one and then uh the bike came in number one and i believe this is the quote-unquote regular bike not the bike plus it has it listed for 1450 and i believe the bike plus costs more than that yeah so this is the original and it is still number one uh that's pretty cool yeah consumer reports is, i mean that's really reputable right it and they is. don't take ads so you don't have to ever worry about can, can i just point out that the treadmill the treadmill is the only one that got two arrows under ease of use for peloton tread look I'm at a, that yeah look at that Anyway, sorry. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> um, you know they don't take ads, so you know that they're not influenced by advertising clients saying if you don't give you gave us a bad review, we're going to pull money because they're never taking money. They they're they're completely supported by subscription. So that's one of the perks about Consumer Reports is that you know that they have integrity in that regard. Yeah, that's the whole point. So yeah. I'm glad I'm glad it's still like that, you know? For sure. Like that's got to be difficult cuz I'm sure they could make so much money selling ads, but then 
they wouldn't be as valuable because then you, you would question their decisions and, and what their motivation is in some cases. So, um, and I think this is also something to great to point to when there's so many people out there as Peloton became super popular that it became cool to, to, to take a dump on Peloton to be like, well, Consumer Reports says bike tread, they're your best bet. So yep. go And that includes taking it. their price into consideration. Just want to point that out. Yeah. So... But on the bike, they do have Echelon at number four. So they don't get everything right. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's number four. Yeah. <laughs> you probably, I mean, the funny you, thing about it is two exercise bikes that are not connected fitness above Echelon. And they're cheaper than Echelon. <laughs> and they're still better. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. That is true. Thank you. Yeah. You, but you'd be better off getting something at a garage sale. <laughs> like that thing that the monkeys ride in the opening credits. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking the about. The riding crop. Yeah. yeah. Parade Magazine has an article about why you should consider signing up for the Peloton app, even if you don't have the, a bike or a tread. Yeah. TDLR. Is that what the kids say? I believe it is. Get the guide. That's why. Yeah. Like you could still get so much out of the guide because you have access to all the classes from the guide and the guide only costs $295. That's full price, by the way. It's still on sale on Amazon, 17% off, just saying. Um, and so you can still get a good deal on that. And you only have to pay twelve ninety five dollars to access those classes. And if you have the guide, you can get access to everything except the the row and there's little things you don't get like on the bike you get lane break you're not going to get that through because wh how wh how would you do use it exactly yeah. exactly so yeah it's pretty darn cool i think this is also an interesting article in terms of expanding their reach because parade i feel like targets a little bit of an older demo especially their print edition i don't know if this will be in their print edition but if it, if it is, that would be interesting because, I mean, you know, that's... Like, that's my parents read that. Right, totally. Yeah. And kind of, so... And I also thought it was interesting, uh, just to go along with it, um, that last week Peloton posted a series of reels on their social media where they had instructors responding to things like things that people think about Peloton. Like, for mm -hmm. example, your your bike is just going to become a clothes rack. Right. Or uh, my favorite was it's it's just a bike. <laughs> and I loved watching Maddie's response to that. He goes, <laughs> he goes it hasn't been that for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, if it's just a bike, I'm out of a job. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine Peloton without Maddie at this point? Like, it's just <laughs> Maddie, you know? Um, and so I thought that was funny. But but a couple of the other instructors did it as well. And I think that, that, that like this Parade Magazine article was probably something that was, you know, brought up for the same reason they're trying to make sure people know that hey it's not just a bike company right. which is great and they need to be doing that that is important yeah because i for so many people that's the first thing they think of with when you say peloton people still use peloton and you know to mean bike i've been on a lot of uh, podcasts lately where i've been people have been asking me questions and one of the things that i have to start with is it's not just a bike like i start with here's the huge breadth of things that peloton does now because people don't know that right like, I, I i really do think that's a big key that we need to get out there and i say we like i belong to the company. i know i know <laughs> We are a stockholder. <laughs> Your shares are valued in the tens of dollars. <laughs> eh, it's more like eight, but. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have more than one. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> and coming up after this, we will talk about the latest pregnant instructor, who I'm sure you know by now. How would you not? Instructors in the news. Erica McLean has done it again. Robin Arzan is pregnant. Wait, Wait, what? That makes it sound like Erica McLean got Robin Arzan pregnant. It which does. I don't think is. I think that's fake news, Tom. Yes, that is, that is not how that occurred. But mm -mm. she she did make that prediction on she this did. very show. She did. And uh, <laughs> yes, I know there's lots of instructors that are in their 20s and 30s getting pregnant. Yes. But Erica McLean has been right about a lot of things. Yes. And uh, not not just one or two. So also she called this long before there was a bump showing. 
I'm just saying. She did. We recorded with her before. Because that episode aired in what early December. Yeah. And we recorded about two weeks before that. Yeah. Maybe three because we because it was sometime in November. Yeah. Because yeah. it was before Thanksgiving because we took off a week from recording interviews over Thanksgiving. So that's right. Actually, the... I think it was during that week that we rec- that oh. that we we recorded. It was we were off for Thanksgiving break. I think that's the oh, week we, we snuck, recorded with her. Okay. Yeah. But um. But yeah. So well, well done. Yes. Well done indeed. But and not, not well done to Robin not to steal her pregnant no, thunder. No, it's great. Congrats. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, she's been very open about the fact that the fertility journey has not been a simple one. Right. And uh, so it, it makes sense that, you know, let's let's go ahead and knock these out, you know? <laughs> However many kids we're having, let's boom, boom, boom. We don't yeah. want to be waiting forever. But it's been a little bit. It has. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what the recommendations are for like whatever you do treatments like right. like that. Like, is it any different? You know, like when it comes to like if you have a baby without any kind of intervention whatsoever, uh, they used to say that like wait like at least nine months before you t- start trying again. Right. I have no idea if there's like some kind of like guideline like that these days. You know. Yeah. I have no idea. Um, and my last experience with this was literally 16 years ago. Right. So I have no idea. The world Mine has changed so much. 18 years ago. Yeah. Almost oh, 19. God. 18 and a half. But yeah, Ugh. it's been a bit. <laughs> a little bit. Been a bit. God, I feel really ancient right now. Yeah, that's going to get worse before <sighs> it gets better. I also, know. it's not going to get better. I know. She was also featured prominently in People magazine. Yes. Well, so. she made her announcement on uh, Live with Kelly and somebody. Kelly and Ryan. Thank you. Now. Kelly and Ryan. And she had said last week, hey, big announcement coming. So we made sure to tell everybody about that. Yeah. And then the announcement came out. And then that same day. Boom. She's all over People Magazine showing her ultrasound <laughs> pictures with her her husband and her daughter, Athena. They were they were all three in there. Those are some really like detailed ultrasound pictures. Like, again, things have changed so much, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's like, it, look at that. They're like practically eight by tens. Yeah, because <laughs> like, the old ones, I was always like, I, I like, can't. Where's the baby? I it's a blob. Sure. I you're can't pregnant. see a thing. Yeah. Like they're like, because like magic eye. I can't do magic eye either. You, you can't. It's the I weirdest can't. thing. And so it's like people. I'm like, I'm like uh, the, the guy on Seinfeld. <laughs> you guys, this says Athena is 22 months old. It's like two years. Yeah. She had that baby two years ago. Yeah. I thought it had been a couple years. Holy crap. I thought it was more like. 16 17 months yeah and she was just a really tall baby but no <laughs> but anyway i can't see magic eye and i can't see the sonogram pictures i i'm always just like hey, well, if you say there's a baby in there i'll take your word for well, it there's no missing that baby no now they're all like 3d they get the kids the kids are having 3d babies these, these days well, i guess that's they don't need they don't need that in uh, magic eye either i guess not whenever i see uh baby announcements in people magazine yeah. The first thing I think. How much money college Col- college is paid for. Yeah. Good like, for them. Put it put it in a trust fund. Let it let it compound. College is paid for. Done. Yeah, that's fantastic. You know, um, while we're talking about this, her new baby book comes out in March too. Oh, uh, strong baby. I okay, think is what it's called. Now, the reason I mentioned that is I happened to see it over on uh, social media today. And um, I thought I took a picture of it, but apparently I didn't. She said on Twitter about her, the the picture. She was like, can you name the instructors that are in this picture? And I thought that was really interesting because I didn't realize that it was in the instructors. But once she pointed it out, you can't freaking miss it. Like, of course, it's the instructors. I think Tom is pulling up the Twitters right now. And we will we will show you for those of you watching YouTube, uh, all of the different instructors that are on the page. Robin Arzon. Here we go. Together more is possible. <laughs> Together more is possible. That's what it's called. Uh, but this particular picture, I thought it said, this says, do you recognize any of the instructors featured in this page from Strong Baby? And it comes out on 221. So um, have you ordered your pre-ordered your copy yet? So uh, that is definitely Maddie just to the left of Robin and Athena. Do you see it? Okay. Do you see it now? The rainbow on his pants? That okay. is definitely Maddie. And then to the left of Maddie is definitely Jess King. Definitely. Okay. Uh, now, I think the person to the right of Robin, I feel like that's Toon Day. Okay. I feel like that's Toon Day. Uh, and then the person to the left of Jess King, I don't know who that is. I think... 
mm, I want to say Kirsten Ferguson, but it doesn't feel right. But to the left of whoever that is, that's definitely Allie Love. Yes, I recognize that one. Yeah. And then I don't know who the two guys on the right are or to the to the guys on the left of Allie Love. I have no clue. I think it's probably John Full. No. <laughs> One second thought. But like, isn't that fascinating that she added them in? I think yeah. that's great. I love that. I love that so much. That made me really happy to see. Bradley Rose was featured on slman.com. SL stands for sheer lux. Ooh. It's very fancy. I was wondering. I had to it, look it up. Because it looks like Sports Illustrated. Like the look of it. Yeah. I didn't know what this was, except there's men instead of women. So well, I wasn't they sure have a, they that. have a, an SL for her ah. as well. If you scroll to the bottom, it's got. This so. is for her. It's men. <laughs> well, for if you, mostly If hers. you lean that way, if you don't, nothing yeah. wrong with that. I just was being silly. <laughs> but, uh, but so yeah, they have one for boys and one for girls i see well it talks about uh, it's just a little tiny snippet where he talks about being a stroke survivor and that health is his priority uh and that every year he tries to be one percent better than the previous year whether it's his happiness physicality or self-care and if he does more than that awesome goals are about moving forward even a small step is a step uh, and he uses supplements to support brain health which i think is great yeah, and uh, I guess we I guess we didn't say this article was about the, uh, fitness pros sharing their 2023 well-being goals, which I guess is a more uh, appropriate way to say New Year's resolutions. Yes, yes, I would agree. It's pretty cool that he got featured in there. Yeah, for sure. Congrats to all the women and the men who <laughs> like to look at Bradley Rose. And all points in between. Absolutely. Peloton Artist Collaborations. The latest artist series features someone we've heard of, so we're very excited about the fact that there's still music out there that we know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's only 40 years old. Yeah, it's, it's Al Jolson, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, no, Duran Duran. It was so great. I took an outdoor run with uh, Susie Chan today. I took okay. two, one with uh, Maddie Majacomo as well. But this particular one was for Duran Duran. And, you know... I know they have a lot of hits. They have a lot of hits. I think people lose sight of how many hits they I have. I had. I had yeah. because 30 minutes went by so fast and it was so refreshing to know every song. Yeah. <laughs> Hungry class. Like the Wolf, Rio, Girls on Film. All of those she played. Every View single one. Kill. Played that. Ordinary World. Don't know if she played that. Um, uh, but yeah, there's a bunch. Yeah. Did it, I say the reflex? You did not, but she played that. Okay. Yeah, it was great. Uh, so I, I highly recommend people are so stoked about this. But if you haven't like if you're not sure about it for whatever reason, maybe you're young and you're like, who's Duran Duran? Give it a try. Yeah. It's it's surprisingly timeless. It holds up really well. And Susie was saying she went back and watched some of the old videos because like she re, it's like she has association so much with watching the videos whenever right. she was growing yeah, they, up. This this was like the first like big act that M, that t- MTV like broke like. Uh, because when MTV first started the record labels, when they were like, send us your videos, we'll play them. They were like, no, you need to pay for this. And they were like, how about go F yourself? And they just started playing the bands that would send them the things for free. And then Duran Duran went out and spent a bunch of money on getting videos made and they sent it to MTV and they blew up and then radio had to play catch up because normally it was like it would be a hit on radio and then move to MTV and then, but it was getting so much play on MTV that the people started calling the radio stations asking for it, and they, they didn't really have a choice. Well, I didn't know about all that, but the the videos uh, were a lot of fun to watch back then. I mean, that was a whole... It was a whole thing. Like, you watched music videos. Like that, oh, it was we, a We whole, all did that. It was a whole thing, because they had the version they showed on MTV, and then they had the version they showed on Cinemax. Well, it's interesting that you say that, because Girls on Film, Susie right. Chan was talking about the fact that, that it was too risque. Because well, there was and, boobs hang in on, it. Hang on, hang on, can I talk? Uh, and they actually banned it in the UK. I Did you know that? That they yeah. banned the video no. in the UK? They banned the video in the UK, and um, yes, there were, there were boobs in it, but the uh, the MTV version, they actually like tamed it down. Yeah, MTV, you couldn't see boobs. I mean, it was a very sexual video, but like in the uncut version, it's just flat out 
boobs. Well, she said, and I haven't watched any of these recently, so don't you know, but Susie Chan said that she was surprised because she went back to watch the original uncut and she was like, it's really tame by today's standards. It's like <laughs> so tame by today's standards. It's just funny how things change over time. For you sure. Know? <laughs> well, I mean, it's, you know, it's like Elvis shaking yes, his hips. Exactly. I shoot him from the waist up. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but anyway, it was a lot of fun. If you haven't gotten a chance to take the classes, please do. And don't sleep on that outdoor run. That was a blast. Susie's so fun to run with. Checking out the competition. So CES was this week, and they had a whole bunch of new uh, health tracking fanciness devices. Yeah, there was a lot of neat things on here. One of the ones that stood out to me was Evie. It's a smart ring. Um, and <laughs> I love how the people with uteruses will soon be able to uh, measure their metrics and manage their menstrual health with, with one ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. Aura Ring's been out there for a while. But get this. Evie is going to be the first smart ring that is considered a medical device. It's going to come out and cost under $300 no added monthly subscription fees. So, uh, oh, so Aura Ring, watch out. Yeah, Evie is on the way. Uh, and then uh, the cyclist thing. Oh, this is so cool. You can get these sports glasses that you, the, this device rather, can be connected to things like accessories like sunglasses and bike handle grips connects to an app on your smartphone and it gives you a complete assessment that's going to assist with your training and improving it helps with sports injury prevention and warns of abnormal physiological conditions like heat exhaustion Uh, it helps keep the user aware of their health status while they're being active now People cannot purchase these directly, but the technology is going to be available for licensing for companies in the United States that create products such as smart sunglasses, sports accessories, or um, bicycles. And this is called iSportwear. Interesting. I thought so. Um, there's a lot of different things. There was this one that was like a camera that you can put on the front of your bike. Uh, there was this other new wearable. There was a new sleep mask that changes the way you sleep. Um, and there's a, it's called No Watch, a new, <laughs> a smartwatch that's not a watch. Uh, so it's a screenless watch that offers real time feedback about movement, sleep, and stress. And I'm like, isn't that a whoop? Yeah, that's, that's a whoop. <laughs> it's just on your wrist. I feel well, like there's whoops on your wrist, but it looks more like a watch. Than, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Anyway, uh, you do need a subscription for that one. So all, uh, all kinds of new cool things coming out. Zero wheel. Well, this looks ridiculous. Well, uh, so I'm a little confused about this. They've had this ab wheel thing forever. Right. But this is like a connected fitness one. So um, this says, do you guys remember the ab wheel? Zero wheel is a lightweight and portable exercise wheel that can be used for core exercises. Uh, it can be programmed in four different modes using an electric motor that can adjust resistance in multiple directions. So... Yeah, it's just an ab wheel. (laughs) I'm not sure this one needs to be... Reinvented? Yeah. Reinventing the ab wheel. Yeah. Uh, Another indoor cycle training thing, which there's like a million of those. Do we need more? I don't think we do. This one like simulates hills, but a lot of those do that. Any Peloton employees listening are like, you don't. (laughs) <laughs> you don't need another one. Well, Stop and, it. and this is the kind that you take like your road bike and put ah, on the trainer. That's what I mean gotcha. by that. Uh, but yeah. But there are still a lot of those too. Th- there are. Yeah. I mean, there's been tons of them. Anyway, I just thought it was interesting. Uh, we, I like to cover CES and see all the, I like to go through and see all the cool stuff. They For have. Sure. In case you missed it. There are two new programs for the guide. Yes, they dropped this week, um, and one of them is called Strong to the Core. Straight. Straight to the Core. (laughs) That's what I meant. Yes. (laughs) And then the second one is The Stronger You with Ben. So No, it's Straighter You. It's Strong to the Core, Straighter You. (laughs) You're messing with me. (laughs) So Ben's is called The Stronger You, and Rebecca's is called Straight to the Core. Uh, so they both dropped this week. And for those of you that are like, I don't have a guide. It's okay. Give it seven weeks. It'll be out. Just just chill out or get a guide. It's only, it's only $295. Unless so you if, live in Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> it was only a couple days. It was, it was only like, couple, okay. like three. <laughs> yeah. So congrats to Ben and Rebecca. Peloton birthdays. 
And finally, only one birthday this week on January 19th. It's Cliff Dwinger. I hope I'm saying that right, Cliff. Happy birthday, Cliff. Happy birthday. For your birthday, I got you a mispronunciation of your name. <laughs> Ta-da. You're so giving, Tom. I am. <laughs> For your birthday, you'll be Crystal. And coming up after this, we will talk to Dr. Pooja Lakshmin about the motivational languages and how they can help you utilize your Peloton even better -er -er. Joining us today via the magic of ZoomTube is Dr. Pooja Lakshman. She is a board-certified psychiatrist, New York Times contributor, medical advisor to Peloton, and a leading voice at the intersection of mental health and gender. She maintains an active private practice where she treats women struggling with burnout, perfectionism, and disillusionment, Crystal, yeah, (laughs) uh, as well as clinical conditions like depression and anxiety. Her book, Real Self-Care, is an answer to the juice the juice cleanses the gratitude lists and the bubble baths. She recently partnered with Peloton to create the five motivational languages, and she's here with us to discuss them today. Hello. Hi, Hi Crystal. Hi, Tom. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, we are so happy to have you here. Thank you so much for taking the time. Yes. After reading all that, my first question is, why are you talking to us? <laughs> <laughs> She is way overqualified. (laughs) Well, you know, it's funny because, um, well, you know, maybe we can skip ahead a a little bit, but um, when Peloton reached out to me to partner with them, I, of course, you know, I'm a psychiatrist. I do the brain. I don't do as much of like, like I'm not a fitness person, you know, I'm terrible at um, exercise to be completely frank. So I was like, why are they reaching out to me? (laughs) You know? And it was lovely because, you know, it's so funny. Once I got going working with Peloton, of course, immediately without prompting, all of my patients started being like, Dr. Lakshman, like, I love doing my Peloton. It's helped me so much. You know, this was during the pandemic too, right. when um, everyone's like, gosh, my Peloton was my lifesaver, you know, that sure. helped me in mental health so much. And it was just so funny how synchronicity happened in that way because, um, yeah, you know, the universe, universe works in the unexpected ways. So <laughs> it, does. It, it, does. It, it also says no matter what level you're at, you can have that. Uh, what is it called? Whenever you don't think that you should be part of something, even oh, though you're imposter, imposter syndrome. syndrome. Imposter syndrome. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Here you are, this amazing woman who has all these accreditations. You're like, why me? <laughs> <laughs> so I am curious, though, how the idea for the five motivational languages came about. Can you share that with us? Yeah. So, you know, kind of stepping back as a psychiatrist and and working in women's mental health, I think for everybody, not even just women, this time of year is just so, so busy and frenzied. And, you know, I like to say that the volume is just so high right now. And we're constantly, all of us just giving and giving and giving to everybody else. So the the whole idea with the motivation languages was to kind of um, give folks in the Peloton community a tool to use to sort of reframe and bring some um, attention back onto themselves during this time of year when we're so focused on pouring into other people. And um, from my from my standpoint in psychiatry, you know, we're always wanting to focus on our why, you know, what is the reason behind the responsibilities and tasks and activities that you ultimately decide to spend your time on. And so when it comes to um, moving your body, exercise, whatever we decide to call it, um, understanding why it's important to you is really powerful in terms of being able to stick with that consistent habit when the volume of all of your other responsibilities gets turned up so high. Um, So it just felt like it was um, from a kind of resource and service standpoint, just something that would be a really nice tool for people to have in their toolbox. And then of course, with 
the Peloton instructors who were just so, um, you know, fantastic and, and compelling, you know, just kind of like having those quotes from them and being able to um, engage with a familiar face, I think also helps. Absolutely. And, and for people who may not have all the motivational languages memorized yet, can you share with, with us what they are? Yeah, absolutely. So there are five different motivation languages and we kind of, um, it's a little bit of a play on the love languages, which, um, a lot of folks are familiar with, but for the motivation languages, we kind of split it up into five different categories. So one is having fun. Two is achieving your goals. Uh, three is building community. Four is the positive affirmations. And then five is what we call tough love. <laughs> I eat Robin. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know in the Peloton community, a lot of folks really appreciate that. Um, and it is a motivator, you know, so I think it's, it's, um, as you can see, they're all really different. Absolutely. Because, um, sorry, my cat Fifi no, just that's okay. loves to join whenever there's a Zoom call going on. So you get Zoom kitties all the time. <laughs> yes. Oh, what a what a beautiful cat! <laughs> it's now a sixth um, language, and it's meow. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so, so you'll notice that they're all quite different, and that's important, right? That's on purpose because each person is going to have a particular. Um, language, motivation language that really sparks and fills you up. And I think it's also important to note that at different times in your life and different seasons of your life, you might have different motivation languages, right? Yeah. Um, so it's not something that's static and you might find that just depending on your mood too, there might be something that strikes your fancy or you might fall into a different category. So it's not something that's like, you know, kind of like you have to pick one and then you're stuck with that forever. <laughs> It's not marriage. <laughs> Although we all know you're not stuck. Although, with I mean, yes, let's be honest here. But no, I mean, that's a good point because, like, I always think about, like, kind of the quintessential, uh, like, motivation factor that you think of in sports is, like, this coach who basically belittles you until you finally decide to to succeed or something. And it's like, and people will say that that doesn't work. And I, I hate that kind of coaching it's why i hate sports to this day because it's what i kept getting but clearly it must work for some people right or they wouldn't keep doing it but the problem is it's not going to work for everyone and a lot of people it's going to really uh kind of alienate yeah yeah i think that's a really good point and i think um you know one of the when we were conceptualizing this you know they all kind of come from the backbone of um sort of boundaries and taking time for yourself. Like that underlies all of these things, especially when it comes to the holidays. Again, like we were talking about where you're giving, giving, giving to everybody else. How do you actually set aside time for yourself? And then each of these five motivation languages, are sort of your pathway into that. And sure, for some folks, it is going to be that really strong language that is really sort of, um, what's the word? Um, prescriptive and kind of declarative, right? Like that you need that sort of external motivator. Um, but then for other folks, it's going to be things like being in community and being part of, you know, you're listening to this podcast, right? Mm -hmm. And being in the Peloton Facebook groups, um, you know, as a physician that there's a very active Peloton Women Physicians Facebook group and people just are, you know, it's it's, it's a community, right? And people right. are sharing rides and this one and, you know, LOL Cody, right? Like it's part of the fun is to be doing it with other people. And then on the other side, there's folks who are like, and, and I see this in my practice that are like, my Peloton time is my me time. It's also my time to just not think about anything else. Like I can just completely let go. I can listen to the music. I can laugh at Cody. You know, it's just, it's just a time where it doesn't matter. I can do whatever I want. Um, so it is, I think it's interesting, of course, from as a psychiatrist, I just find it fascinating how motivation is so different across the spectrum. You really can't put you can't put a label on it as much. Yeah. And, and to that point, I feel like, um, when I found Peloton, that's why it was so, it was such a life-changing thing for me because 
I had never found an exercise that I could do that I enjoyed and kept then that engaged me and that I kept coming back to. Um, so when I was reviewing the the motivational languages, I was like, I identified with all of them. And I think if I had to pick like, what's the one that that speaks to me the most is the the having fun, because if I didn't have fun, I wouldn't keep coming back to it. But there are days that I experience the entire, like all of them. <laughs> there are days I need the tough love. There are the days that I want to engage with the community and they're what keep me going. Um, and, and it's just interesting how they can all kind of come from the same place, but they can all affect us differently. And I'm also curious how, how you related these, how, how did you relate these back to the five love languages? Did you kind of think about where those started to think about the five motivational languages or was it just like using that as a template? Yeah, I think it was more using it as a template of sort of like, this is a structure that people really kind of understand. There's sort of this mental model that's yeah. already out there, especially when you're looking at how to give people tools that are easily accessible in our busy, chaotic lives. It's so much easier to do it based on something that folks already sort of understand. So we thought that it would be nice to use this framework that's already there because then there's one less hurdle for you in terms of thinking of it as sort of a psychological tool. I'm always curious when you come up with things like this, the royal you, not like, do you start with a number? Like since it was five love languages, did you like, we need to have five or did you, did you kind of map them out and be like, oh, we got five of these things? Well, I think we were really focused on making sure that we're capturing all of the different ways that people can be motivated and making sure that each of these different buckets really spoke to the type of personality or lens that was going to be brought to. So it was less about a specific number and more about making sure that we were including all of the different whys, right, that people can use to come to Peloton and, and that they could, again, really see themselves in this framework and easily kind of come to it um, and use it as a tool this month. Yeah. So how, how do you anticipate uh, a Peloton member using them? Is it more just kind of an identification thing of like, oh, that's who I am, or that's what works for me? Or is there a way to actually like, uh, kind of weaponize this information? <laughs> <laughs> Good weapons. Gosh, healthy it's not weapons. like a psychiatrist here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think like all of this comes back to the internal, right? Because our minds are just so powerful. So the first step is there's this framework, right? And you already kind of understand it because you know the five love languages. And then you're now thinking of it in terms of Peloton and moving your body and exercise and understanding that this time of year, it is actually really important for you to fill your own cup. And if you're in the Peloton community, and this is one way that you know you fill your cup, here's this mental model that you can use with the motivation languages so that each time you kind of get on the bike, you know, just as Crystal was talking about now, like you looked at it and you're like, wait, I could fit all of, you know, I fit all of these but there's some days that I really love being part of the community. And there's some days where I'm looking at my app and I'm like, oh, I, I want to make sure that I get a workout in today because I love my streak. So you're kind of fitting into sort of that performance outcomes based, right? And then maybe there's another day where you're like, I, I do really want some tough love. So putting a label on things gives you a internal narrative that then kind of connects the dots for yourself. So it's, it's kind of mentally, it's just all about sort of the conversation you're having with yourself, the mapping that you're doing for yourself, the narrative that you're creating and, and with the motivation um, languages, it's you're giving yourself that, right? Yeah. So, so like, I don't on, that makes sense. It's sort of a yeah, roundabout it, answer. It kind of gives you the vocabulary on a day where yeah. maybe you're not really feeling it. You're like, oh, I need to have fun today. And on a, and if you have like four or five of those days in a row, now you're like, well, maybe I need somebody to really kick me in the shape. And if you have like 30 days of, of those days in a row, you probably should see a professional. <laughs> right. Right. right, right, right. And that feels really different than saying, oh, I need to work out today. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. Right. It does. It's interesting how just labeling the conversation in your head with that proper vocabulary can change the context and the dynamic of how you see it. It's, it's interesting. Um, I guess it would make you also help you feel less uh, blaming yourself for mm -hmm. not feeling it, you know, like, Oh, this is a day when I need X, not, 
I'm an awful person for not wanting to do this today. Exactly. That's- exactly. I don't want to name any names because I would hate to embarrass Crystal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am definitely a blamer. I'm definitely a, oh, why did you not do this today? Yeah, I'm definitely that person. So it does, it does genuinely help me. And and I'm, I want to go back to when you were talking earlier about how Peloton contacted you to be part of the advisory board. Um, when you said you felt like maybe that like why you but as you what made you decide ultimately this was a good step a good fit for you yeah yeah absolutely so i'll be totally transparent i really don't partner with with very many brands and so it actually took me six months to decide to say yes um one because i was a little bit like i'm not a fitness person you know like is and i did a lot of research on my own about peloton Um, and talking to friends, talking to colleagues, I mentioned that of course, like totally serendipitously, my patients started mentioning Peloton (laughs) in (laughs) therapy sessions, even though they had no idea that Peloton had reached out to me. And I realized that Peloton is so much more than a fitness app or, um, a bike company. Peloton really is this community and lifestyle and they're people in the Peloton community really get something real from, from yeah. Peloton. Um, and, and it, you know, it's almost, at least from where I sit in women's mental health as a non-fitness person, it, it almost feels like the fitness aspect of Peloton is secondary. I know that's not true for everybody, but from where I sit, like it, it just gives so much more outside of the health benefits of the exercise. And so in that, you know, it's kind of six month period that I was doing my own research of deciding whether to partner with Peloton. I was like, wow, like this is, this is like a real thing. This isn't, you know, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of why. And, and of course it was exciting for me to, um, get to be the first and only psychiatrist that is part of the health and wellness council and really be able to help Peloton figure out like how to bring mental health into the conversations more in the community. Also how to engage members who might be intimidated by the fitness aspect of Peloton. That's, that's totally where I live. Um, I think one of the the blogs that I wrote for the output was like, you know, being at the bottom of the leaderboard, that is me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Statistically speaking, half of the people will be at the bottom half of the no, leaderboard. No, I'm at the very, very bottom. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. I feel it. <laughs> I gave up on that a long time ago. Like I stopped focusing on that because of all these other, these other things that motivate me. It stopped being important. So I think, I think to your point, that's that's a huge thing. Whenever I first started Peloton, I was very competitive and I had spreadsheets and I was looking at my output and I was, you know, really intense about all of that. And now I'm just like, yeah, but I, I moved today and I I'm better than I was yesterday because I did that. And that's, that's what matters. Not, not the competition anymore. And for some people it's still the competition and I'm not judging that. I'm just saying for me personally, that was a nice change to be able to pivot. (laughs) Right. And I think one of the really nice things too, is just that, that, that why can change in the different seasons of your life too, right? Like there might be another phase in your life when maybe you're like training for a race or something like that, where you're like back into that kind of competitive phase. Um, I just had a baby six months ago. And so there was, thank you. So, um, you know, there was like, I love the app. I love that you can just do like a 10 minute, you know, stretch or you really can just make it whatever works for you. And so again, um, I think it's just, it's so much more than, than a bike or a tread or or the row rower. And we struggle with row and rower too. Yeah. yeah, (laughs) Yeah. The row, row, I want to say the rower, uh, still new. Um, I, I'm also curious that you, you've done a lot with the topics of women and a lot with the topics of mental health and women. So I'm curious about if you would be comfortable telling us a little bit about your journey and how these topics became such a central part of your life. Yeah. Um, that is a great question. I could talk about that for like the whole day. Um, so I'm going to condense <laughs> it. I'll spare you my monologue. Um, <laughs> um, you know, I think as, as a South Asian woman, growing up, my parents were immigrants, um, you know, and, and, you know, I was a women's studies major in college. So I've always been really, um, interested in and focused on gender 
And when I went to medical school, I originally thought that I would be an OBGYN. Um, but I did that as my first rotation and I hated, absolutely hated being in the OR. Um, and I really wanted to talk to my patients and, and on all my rotations, I would be the person in the room being like, so like, you know, tell me about your family. Like, what do you guys do for fun? Like, I want to hear all the drama of like, what's going on with your mother-in-law, you know? Um, all of this other stuff. And, um, you know, when I got to my psychiatry rotation, I was allowed to do that, <laughs> you know, like that, was, that was the work. And... They were no longer giving you side eye. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And here were all these other people that were very interested in the same things. And we're like, this is great. So yeah, so I went into psychiatry and, and found that there's actually, um, you know, the field of women's mental health is only I would say like, even like not even like a decade old, like it's still developing. Like the first American psychiatric association textbook of women's mental health just came out this year. That's insane. Yeah. It is just bananas. And, um, one of my, um, partners at Gemma, which is the company that I founded in 2020, Lucy Hutner, uh, Dr. Lucy Hutner, she's what the lead author of that textbook. Um, and so, you know, we're all in this field, we're all just kind of like, how is this not something that is part of the conversation? You know, why is this not given more attention, whether it's things like, you know, mental health during pregnancy, postpartum, whether it's things like, you know, perimenopause, menopause, um, you know, it's just such a vast area that has been underserved. So, um, so yeah, I, I see myself, you know, I'm a psychiatrist, I, I take care of patients, but I'm also very much an activist. And my, my writing is where I get to sort of be on my soapbox and like rage at the machine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, um, yeah, like, and that's one of the reasons too, why like working with Peloton is so great because I feel like they, they kind of get the fact that we need more in this, in this women's, um, mental health space. And I'm also curious why you think it's important to separate women's mental health from men's mental health. Like, is there something that's obvious that's different about how men and women process things? Yeah. Well, there's two pieces to that. Well, what, um, Big question. It's a controversial topic, um, <laughs> but I'll say maybe the way that I think about it is twofold. One, the hormones are different for women. So we know that the act of carrying a fetus causes huge changes in hormones like estrogen and progesterone and going through menopause or having a period, all those things impact uh, people who identify as women. And so there's biology, which the main takeaway from that lens of it is that the research is so scant, like the dearth of research. And that's not an accident, right? That, that the research is scant on, is on how that impacts <laughs> women, feel, right? Um, so there's the biology, but then the other piece of it is the whole social aspect. And that's where kind of my book comes in, um, Real Self-Care, which um, if I can be totally plug it gosh, plug. and plug it, it comes yeah. out in March. Heck yeah. um, it's called a real self-care, a transformative program, um, to redefine wellness, crystals, cleanses, and bubble baths, not included. So that <laughs> that's all about the way that our social structures and our systems make it so much more difficult for women to take care of themselves and to do real self-care, because if you don't have affordable childcare, if you don't have paid parental leave, um, if you don't have health insurance that you can afford, then how are you supposed to do any of this stuff? So yeah, like a bubble bath is not going to fix any of this. Not going to fix that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. So, um, you know, both of those things are true. And I think sometimes that conversation about how is it different for women can get really polarized. The last thing I'll say on that is that people who identify as men also need to be part of this equation too. Like it isn't just women, like we need men to be part of the solution. We need people across the whole gender spectrum to be part of the solutions to sort of rise up and hold our, our lawmakers accountable um, because that's that's the real answer. But in the book, what I do is provide a new framework for real self-care. So it's not just a bubble bath. It's not just um, going to yoga. It's actually this internal process. It's 
understanding how you make decisions. So coming back to Peloton and motivation, really getting clear for yourself of what matters to you and, and how you spend your time. So one person's yoga class can be completely performative. Another person's yoga class could actually be really nourishing. Um, so it just takes kind of more self-reflection. I love that. Like instead of just kind of hopping from thing to thing without even understanding why you're doing it, <laughs> having some <laughs> having some understanding as to why you're motivated to try that, why that helps or doesn't help. And I really like that. Not We're not all created equal, so we're not all. No, gonna... no. And there's not a one size solution. And and when you're just hopping from thing to t- thing, when you don't understand your motivation, that's when it feels like a chore. And that's when it's just another thing on your to do list that you feel guilty that you never got to. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, it, it all fits together and, um, it's so great to see folks like you who are out here kind of champion, championing, championing (laughs) the cause of, of, um, spending time moving your body and taking care of yourself. Yeah. That's, I, I feel like that's, that's really made a difference in my happiness level. It's totally changed my life. And, uh, Tom doesn't like to exercise, but he does do strength training now, and he does see a benefit from it, even though he doesn't like to do it. I don't. <laughs> His- I started reading your the the five languages. The first one was have fun. I was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> he's more of a I do it because I like the outcome than than anything else. Which hey, at least he's doing it. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm curious about Gemma and what prompted you to, to found that. And I want to, I wanted to give you an opportunity to tell people a little bit more about it as well. It's, I think it's yeah. a really cool thing. Absolutely. So Gemma actually came out of the conversations that I was having on Instagram. So I started this Instagram account in about 2018 and found that, you know, there's tons of influencers out there that are giving lots of advice, uh, that have really no professional (laughs) credentials. And, um, I thought there needs to be a space to get actual evidence-based advice about women's mental health. Um, and so I found a Gemma in 2020 and over the past couple of years, we have been, um, really building from the ground up, um, in terms of, providing um, courses on women's mental health, but in a really accessible way. So this year we did email classes and we have a WhatsApp community and we're really focused on kind of not just pregnancy, postpartum parenting, but the whole span of all of the different ways that women are um, coming up against these different systems and having to navigate and negotiate in their relationships, in their families, Um, in their workplaces. Um, So we have a really strong focus on impact and equity. And um, we just launched a beta membership model um, about a month ago. And in the new year, we have a whole bunch of new programs coming out. Um, So so yeah, so Gemma is kind of a place where we're, we're envisioning ourselves as really being the source of um, community that is facilitated by actual psychiatrists and physicians and other experts. So it's not just like joining a Facebook group where there's no structure. It's like, we're very tools focused. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's kind of an alternative to, you know, let's say a bubble bath or the essential mm-hmm. oils, dare I say, it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't get hate mail. <laughs> Oh, uh, we're used to it. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't think so though. In all seriousness, I think it's I don't see how anybody could be angry about actionable tools. You oh, don't they have find to be... they'll find a way. <laughs> <Yeah>. have, you, <laughs> have you met the internet? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. I have. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for your time today. Yes, and before we let you go, can you just let everybody know where they can find you and, and your stuff. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So I'm on Instagram. Um, my my handle is Pooja Lakshman. Um, and my website is poojalakshman.com. And then Gemma is G-E-M-M-A, GemmaWomen.com. And again, one last time, my book that comes out on March 14th is called Real Self-Care. And you can actually pre-order it right now already. Thank Yay. you so much, guys. It was such a pleasure to talk. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you. And likewise. Yes. <laughs> So I guess that brings this episode to a close. Until next week, where can people find you? 
People can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Crystal D. O'Keefe. They can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and the Peloton leaderboard at Clip Out Crystal. And you can find me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. You can find the show online, facebook.com slash The Clip Out. While you're there, like the page, join the group. And of course, don't forget our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash The Clip Out. So that's it for this one. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, keep pedaling. And rowing. And running. He can't trip things.